Hi, I'm Sue Harrison. It's lockdown, but it's given me an opportunity to reassess, reflect and refine my project, which is to document the journey my husband and I made round the UK in a boat a few years ago. Essentially, it's about my response to the changing relationship of our coast to the ocean. Whether or not that is appropriate and we'll ever do it again is up for question. However, we've done it, we've survived and now I want to try and record our experiences through Stitch. I want to make my own sea charts which will convey different sorts of information to the charts which we use to navigate on our trip. I have a surfeit of information besides a daily blog and photographs. There's log books and record books detailing, for example, position every 15 minutes. I tried to make a continuous sketch. This was okay in quieter patches of water, but almost impossible in wilder conditions where there was almost no other point of reference other than the sea. So I made another sketchbook trying to accurately chart the length of the coast. This helped me explore how to represent the work in a linear fashion and to get to grips with scale. I was keen on including the names of sea areas particularly as they represented for me points of intersection between mankind and the ocean. I also wanted to make the connection with the nautical term telltales pieces of thread or cloth that dangle from the sails of yachts as an indicator of wind conditions, thereby aiding nav navigation. Perhaps mine would tell a different tale. As soon as I started stitching, I found that the stitching pro process produced a momentum of its own and our journey began to be articulated in a different way, a way that just listing the facts wouldn't do. Finding the potential of the materials I was using is what guided the process with the results being under continuous assessment. In this way I see what I make rather than make what I see. So now here in this sample most of the tails have been largely threaded underneath the surface of the work, reappearing only at the edge. The tails that are still prominent are those indicating arrival and departures. The land, instead of being described by contour lines, is heavily stitched with the paths of rivers in chain stitch. What started as a fairly accurate tracing of river courses became much looser when translated in stitch, perhaps reflecting the actual nature of water. Instead of commencing the run of stitches with a knot of thread on the underside, the thread tails were frayed out to give an ever more watery effect. And this is the underside. The coastal edge here has been stitched with machine zigzag. Although I thought this was appropriate here on the northeast coast of Scotland, chosen to sample because it was relatively straight but craggy, I now find that I prefer to use hand stitching for its ability to capture more intricate sections of the coast. It's a slower method and allows me to linger longer over my journey. The actual sea passage is portrayed by a beaded white line, the evenly spaced beads echoing our 15 minute positioning notes, along with the frequent dodging of lobster pots. The destination here is Peterhead, indicated by the lifebuoy, with a telltale indicating the haven provided by the bay which was needed in, as the weather was deteriorating and indeed we were holed up for some time. So this sample chart is now three-dimensional, double-sided and represents but a fragment of our journey around with 20 more to go. I've yet to work out 
how to incorporate linking my concerns about the impact of changing coastal habitats upon wading birds on migration, but I'm hoping that the way forward will gradually materialise and reveal itself. That's the underside, or the other side. The position my work has arrived at is in a way quite, quite self-indulgent. It's personal as I have no client. The only agendas I have to address are my own. Consideration of display and audience are also of minor importance at this stage. I know that when I'm ready, I can submit it to our local art trail and display it on my own terms, probably near a water course. So how did I get to where I am now? Well, I've always been interested in the natural environment. My journey to the sort of work I'm doing has almost been inevitable. My preference has always been to use the medium of textiles. Initially, my focus was on the more decorative potential of natural materials. Here, leaves are being used as fabric, stems and twigs as thread, and cones as beads. During the 90s, there was a growing awareness of environmental issues. County councils were keen to demonstrate their credentials. Agenda 21 of the Rio Earth Summit was often quoted in client briefs guiding community workshops. So I started off making rather literal work. This piece, for example, considers the effect of climate change. I went on to make work which was more about the link between humans and nature, conducting workshops with schools, community groups, and sometimes just people passing by. This was working for county councils, wildlife trusts, and even industry. This piece from a work commissioned by Unilever, keen to show its more caring side, was with an infant school, involved making silk paper and trapping their hopes for the future in a piece that took the form of tree bark. Felting, I found, was also a very accessible medium for community activities. It also meant that work could survive very well outside. This piece was about the link with trees and our respiratory system and it stayed outside until the seeds in the soil germinated. Human disregard for nature was also a preoccupation, one which strengthened ironically when we moved to rural North Yorkshire. Having stopped teaching by now, I took the time to interrogate my practice and assess the relevance of stitch. I discovered that it was the potential of the process that commended continuing with stitch rather than the potential in the end product. So trying to increase levels of engagement with the natural world rather than just passive appreciation took me into the practices of bird watching. Here, recording and portraying migration made an interactive display which could be only read by participants walking through the work. Here, a museum commission is responding to a collection of birds' eggs, which is now a legal, a legal activity, by means of displaying the voided shapes of the eggs and the birds that might have hatched from them, the piece commented on what we had lost about, without the need for recourse to explanation. It will have become clear that I always seem to have been trying to follow my own agenda and I was very pleased to be given this opportunity again by Celebrating Place project launched by Chrysalis. Here, place was subjected to an examination from different perspectives, par participants selecting a location for the hide, talking about their point of view, which was then stitched on a panel, only read from the inside as usual. This project had several resurrections and continues to be ongoing. I think that This final image of prayer flags was the starting point of another ongoing project which is looking at species extinction. But it also leads me to conclude that it reflects my intention to produce non-gallery based work 
with the intention of engaging a non-gallery going public in the hope for a greater connection with our relationship to nature.